Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I know I'm a bit late to the party on this one because there have already been done a lot of videos extolling the virtues of having Lightroom's tone curve available in masking. And I really hate to use this cliche term, but I'm going to anyway. It really is a game changer. In today's video, I'm going to show you my take and how I go about using Lightroom's tone curve in masking. And to kind of hammer home the point a little bit, we're going to be working on this image. And if you look over at the right hand side, you could see that all of the little eyeballs are diminished, meaning no edits have been done to this image at all. It is an unedited Nikon RAW file. I'm going to use the tone curve in masking to do all of the edits on this image. So without further ado, let's do that. I'm going to open up masking. And I want to do something with the sky. I want to make it a little darker. So I'm going to get a sky mask first. And you can see that it over selected a bit. It has part of his shirt. I want to subtract that. So we're going to click the subtract button and we'll subtract the subject. And when you do that, you can see that it cleaned it up pretty nicely. So what I want to do now is make the sky darker. So I'm going to go to the curve that is available in the tone curve or in masking, I should say. And there's actually four different curves here. There's a regular point curve, and then there's a red, green, and blue mask. For this, to darken it, I'm just going to use the point curve. So I'm going to put a point right in the middle. It's kind of an anchor point. And we'll go up to the top, and we'll push down to make it darker. Just like that. Now, I want to maybe saturate the blue a little bit, so I'm going to go to the blue curve. And if you look at the box here for the blue curve, you'll notice that the top left-hand side is blue and the lower right-hand side is yellow. What this means is if I go to the curve and I pull down towards yellow, I'll add yellow to that part of the mask, which is the sky. But I want to add blue, so we'll push up. And we're just adding a bit more blue to that sky. So here's before, after. There's before, and there's after. Now, if it's too intense, don't worry about going to each of the different curves and grabbing your points and pulling them in the opposite direction. Just remember there is an amount slider at the top so that you could just dial it down with the amount slider or push it up. And that really comes in handy. So use that to fine tone your adjustments you do with the curve. So the sky is done. The next thing I want to do is something with everything except the sky and the people. So pretty much the background and the ground around them. So we're going to create a new mask and we're going to select the background. And when we do that, it did a nice job of excluding the people, but it selected the sky as well. So I need to subtract from this mask as well. So we'll click subtract and we'll select the sky. Now we have everything selected except the people and except the sky. Now what I want to do here is I want to go to the regular point curve for this and I'll put a point right in the middle and I'll just see what happens if I push up or if I push down. And I kind of like what I'm doing here when I'm pushing it down. Let's go to the brighter parts. This is the top right hand side of this diagonal line. These are the brighter pixels in that mask. I'll push that up. Then I'll go to these darker ones, pull that down a little bit. Now you can see I overdid it, but to kind of hammer home the point, you can see the dramatic change that I affected here. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now, if you found that you've adversely increased the saturation when you've done this, there is a refined saturation slider at the bottom of the curve. And you can pull this to the left and it will pull some of that saturation away. In this case here, I'm just going to leave that saturation high. I could go up to this amount slider because it might be just a touch, a little bit too contrasty. I'll just tweak it down a little bit. All right, so we've done basically two masks. Those two masks have three curves. The sky had two curves, one to make it darker and one to add a little more blue to it. And then the surroundings around them um, has one curve. And I basically increased the contrast with that curve. Now I want to do something with the subjects. So we're going to create a new mask and we're going to select the subject. And it did... Very well, it selected both of them. And all I want to do here is I want to go to the regular point curve and I want to just make them a bit brighter. Just like that. Now I could come in and try to add a little contrast. A little darker down here. Brighter up there. 
But all, all in all, I don't think I really need to do that. Now, if you want to reset a curve, just right click right on the curve and reset the channel or reset the single curve. You don't want to reset all of them usually. And then we could come back in and come brighter. That's it. Now I'm done. I have did all my editing using curves in masks. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. One more time. There's before and there's after. And if you feel that, again, that something is overdone, like that sky might be a little bit too blue, open up your masks again and go to that pertinent mask and just make it active by clicking on it. And then you go to the volume slider or the amount slider. I call it a volume slider because it's kind of like a volume control on a radio. Just pull it down a little bit. There you go. There's before and there's after. Before, after. So that's it. That's how to use the curves or, cur or tone curve that is now available in masking. And it really is a game changer in my opinion. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.